Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you on Rabbi Al Mubarak. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali, speaking to you from the Muslim Media Hub. Today, we're looking at uh, one of the keys to unlocking the meaning of the Quran as part of a series on 30 keys. Today's key is uh, to recognize how the doctrine of abrogation has been abused when it comes to interpreting uh, the Quran. Why is it important to recognize this abuse? It's because uh, the meaning of the Quran is uh, there, popular in the community and known to Muslims generally. And uh, these meanings are there in our minds. So we come to the Quran, we already have the meaning in mind. We're reading a verse of the Quran and uh, it doesn't uh, it jump out at, at, at us from the Quran. It jumps out at, at us from our inner minds. It's what we knew before. And many of these uh, meanings are, are misinterpreted meanings. And one of the uh, sources of such misinterpretation is uh, the uh, doctrine of uh, abrogation that has been abused. Let's understand this uh, a little bit more. What is the doctrine of abrogation and how has it been abused? As a stepping stone to that, to segue into it, let's uh, think back about what I discussed in a previous episode about the example of uh, wine being prohibited in stages. The first stage, uh, you know, they're being asked, you're, you're asking about it, tell them, you know, there's harm in it. Uh, second stage, when you drink, don't come to pray. Third stage, stay away from drinking. So some uh, will cite this and say, oh, this means that the Quran is abrogating itself. And what, it, what do they mean by that? They mean that a law is given and then it is repealed. Uh, it is superseded by a later law. What we should say in response to that is that uh, this is not a good example, on, although uh, this is the prime example that is used, the example of wine being prohibited in stages. Why is this not a good example? Because in the end, we can read the Quran and put the three verses together and we can say that they all apply. It's not like one has been cancelled or abrogated or repealed. Uh, they, they still all apply. How? If we start from the end, uh, with alcohol being prohibited, this is clear. When we put the three verses together, we know that alcohol is prohibited. But come to the second one that we mentioned, uh, that is from Surah An-Nisa, the 43rd uh, verse, it is cl clear that if you happen to drink, then you shouldn't come to pray because you, you, you need to sober up and then come to pray. And uh, the first one still applies, which is uh, chapter 2, verse 219, which uh, says basically that there is harm in, in drinking wine. All of them still apply. Surah 5, verse number 90, which says that it is prohibited. So that's clear. Uh, but if it so happens that you drink, Surah 4, verse 43 applies. You should not come to prayer. And Surah 2, verse 219 always applies because it is always a fact that uh, a wine is harmful. All of the verses apply. It's not like one has cancelled the other. Whereas uh, with the doctrine of abrogation, basically uh, that doctrine is saying that uh, there are some verses which cancel some other verses. Some verses uh, don't apply anymore. And what that would mean is that uh, we as Muslims would be reading through the Quran, we come to a verse and be, oh, we, oh, God is speaking to me here and God is telling me this, I better do it. In the back of our minds, oh, no, but wait, there's this doctrine of abrogation. Maybe this verse is abrogated by another verse. Uh, and uh, previously I cautioned about you know jumping to conclusions based on one verse. That's the caution still applies. But uh, the uh, the abuse of the doctrine of abrogation is when people have said, oh, the, the verse no longer applies. It's not so much that this needs to be understood in the light of another one. So understanding one verse in the light of another one, this is called taxis or specification. So you can have a situation where one verse speaks in a general way and then the other verse speaks in a more specific way. So we know that both apply. One applies generally and the other one applies specifically. So they both apply. But the doctrine of abrogation basically says, that one is cancelled. And so we may have, for example, a regulation which says that women should, uh, you know, get so much uh, in terms of inheritance uh, from their husbands. And then this, it, it is said that uh, the verses about inheritance cancels uh, that. Or that to, more specifically from Surah Al-Baqarah, it is mentioned that uh, one can make uh, uh, a... a a wasiya or a bequest uh, in case of the one's parents, uh, so that one's uh, wealth, you know, some of it will go to the parents. But then the doctrine of abrogation says, no, these are cancelled by uh, the verses which give specific shares to the parents. And what we can say is that uh, they all apply. Uh, they, you, we just have to understand different circumstances in which the different ones will apply. In case someone is making a will, then one makes the will. Uh, and if in case one has not made the will, then there are specific shares uh, given to specific uh, relatives uh, in the verses that deal with this. In a similar way, we have uh, verses of the Quran which uh, show 
uh, that uh, fasting is uh, a regulation from God and uh, an institution for the Muslim community. And then there is a verse which says that there is permission for those who uh, might have been able to fast, but uh, for some reason or not, they're not fasting. Uh, so they give a fidya instead. So that still applies because uh, the doctrine of abrogation says that this one is cancelled. Uh, but we should see that uh, this is not really cancelled. Now, how does one support the doctrine of abrogation? How did uh, they arrive at this? They go to the uh, second chapter of the Quran, the 106th verse, where it says, Man min ayatin aw nun siha, nati bi minha aw misliha. Whatever verses we cancel are caused to uh, be uh, forgotten, uh, we bring one uh, better than it or is similar to it. So they think that this means that God has canceled some of the regulations within uh, the Quran. And uh, that leads to a problem in that uh, we read one thing and then we say, oh no, this must have been canceled by the, the other verse. Well, rather, we should say that all of the verses on a subject should be understood together in harmony and in coalescence uh, with each other. In fact, the doctrine of abrogation goes beyond this. Uh, it even says that uh, there were verses of the Quran uh, which were once uh, revealed, uh, but they're no longer recited. They're no longer part of the Quran. And uh, and if the regulation along with that was to be forgotten as well, of course, we'll say, you know, there's no, no issue. But uh, sometimes it is said that there is a verse which was once revealed, uh, but uh, it's no longer in the Quran, but this law still applies. Uh, so, for example, people point to the idea that there was once a verse in the Quran that said, we should stone adulterers and adulteresses. That is no longer in the Quran, uh, but we still have to stone adulterers and adulteresses. Uh, and of course, that uh, practice is supported by hadiths as well. But from the Quran, it is very clear that uh, As for the uh, adulterer, male or female, flog each of them a hundred lashes. That's in Surah 24, verse number two. When and how and so on to flog and, uh, you know, the, how this will uh, work in a modern society and all of this. Uh, these are details to be discussed, but just uh, on the topic of whether a stoning is a regulation uh, at all, we see that this is not a regulation in the Quran. But some people are trying to say, oh, it is uh, a regulation from the Quran, not the Quran as we hold it in our hands today, but at least that theoretical Quran in which uh, there are verses which are not included in the written pages, but they're still like in a way, Quranic verses, because there was one, they were once revealed in the Quran. They're no longer recited, but the verses still apply. So these are ways in which Quran's meaning has become obscured because people have adopted this doctrine. And based on this doctrine, they have actually negated some verses of the Quran. Not, of course, willfully to deny the revelation from God, but due to this uh, misunderstanding that arose in Muslim communities over time, that there are verses of the Quran which have been abrogated. So what we should say in conclusion, is that uh, there are verses which are more specific. Uh, some verses are more general, so we should understand uh, the general in the light of the specific and the specific in the light of the general. We should interpret the two together. We should bring together all verses dealing with a, a subject. Don't jump to conclusion based on one verse alone, but see them all together. See how they link together. Uh, the verses that deal with the prohibition of wine is cited as a classic case in which there is abrogation, meaning that one verse is repealed or cancelled. And we see that this is not a a case in which something is cancelled, but a case in which uh, things are spoke, spoken about more specifically, and we can see the circumstances in which things like this might apply. So, for example, if we're dealing with a new community, we don't have to tell them right away, okay, you know, that uh, drinking is prohibited. No, if they ask us, definitely we'll tell them. Uh, but uh, initially, we can just go gradually with that. We can tell them about the harms of alcohol, let them realize that this is harmful. Uh, we can tell them, you know, okay, but you're drink if you're drinking, you, you, you can't come to pray when you're drinking. You have to sober up and then come pray. But gradually, as we teach them to pray, they become accustomed to pray, they will give up drinking on their own. And then we'll be in good spirits to tell them, you know what, it's actually forbidden in our religion. Or when they're close to that, we can take them to the next step by telling them that it's prohibited in our religion. That's when the final regulation applies. All of it applies. We just have to know the circumstances and how they all fit together. That's one of the keys for unlocking the meaning of the Quran. Tomorrow, we'll come back and look at another key to unlocking the meaning of the Quran. That is uh, the knowledge that uh, the Quran should not always be taken literally. Sometimes people go overboard with taking things literally and they misinterpret the Quran in that way. So a key to unlocking the Quran is not to take everything 
uh, literally all of the time. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali, saying Ramadan Mubarak from the Muslim Media Hub. This Ramadan, we're making history together. Behind me is the building you helped us purchase for the sake of Allah for the establishment of the Muslim Media Hub. Uh, we've started filming our television program here called Let the Quran Speak, and we're training the youth to produce other such shows and videos for social media uh, so that we can present the message of Islam to the wider world. Uh, this Ramadan, you can help us to raise $100,000 for the sake of Allah Azawajal. Uh, please go to our website, muslimmediahub.com. May Allah bless you and all of your loved ones this Ramadan and forever. I'm your brother in faith, Shabir Ali, saying Assalamu Alaikum, peace be with you, and Ramadan Mubarak.